Hey everyone, happy Friday. It is the end of week two and we have one more painting to go. This is painting number 10 and today we're going to be painting another window and this window we're going to be painting sort of at the end of the day. It's going to maybe get dark by the time we're finished. We will see. But it's been a really fun week and Hopefully you've got something out of the other videos and listening to me talk on and on about my love for windows and doorways and passages and whatnot. So next week is going to be a different theme and I'm thinking about doing really simple still life objects from my kitchen. That's the idea right now. We'll see if I end up doing it on Monday. So let's paint. Let's do it. All right. So this is our last painting of the week. Our last painting of working with doors and working with windows, openings and whatnot. So for this last painting, I'm painting the window that's in our bathroom. And through this window, you can see the window of the next row home over. And it becomes a sort of light chamber. And right now it's in the late afternoon. I'm getting a pretty intense amount of sun captured in between the two homes. And so I set up a really bright light on the surface of my painting to accommodate this so that I would maybe be able to mix the colors straight up what I saw on my painting. And I wouldn't have to do any kind of relative proportional darkening of the values. I would actually just be able to match the value straight up. So this didn't work when the direct sunlight was hitting the house next to us. But when clouds were passing over, I was able to match the values perfectly. So this has actually got me thinking about a few paintings. Actually, the painting that I showed yesterday, the Antonio Lopez Garcia painting of the window in the afternoon. This is almost the exact same light context as what that painting was created under. So the interior becomes really dark almost like a cave, and then everything outside of the window is pretty bright and washed out. And another painter that kept coming to mind when I was doing this was Richard Diebenkorn. And there's this specific painting of Diebenkorn's where there's a folding chair on the inside of a dark room and you can see out of a doorway and everything outside is really, really bright. But he also made the chair inside of the room pretty bright as well. So it's kind of this interesting decision that he made to do that. This whole time period for Diebenkorn was such an interesting time period. It was after he had been doing quite a lot of, I guess, abex, post-abex painting. And he was in the state of making all of these abex paintings that were sort of referencing landscapes and different locations where he was living. And then a few years went by and he transitioned into this new phase of work where all of his work wasn't just referential of the landscape, but instead he just started painting the landscape straight up. Sometimes the paintings are a little bit abstracted. Other times they just feel like an observational painting of what he was looking at. But the beautiful thing about these paintings are how fresh they are and also how the compositions in a lot of his pieces are just excellent. They're really beautiful. The BMA, a few years ago, had this wonderful exhibition that compared Diebenkorn to Matisse and gave you this opportunity to draw parallels between the two artists' work. But it was so nice because I was able to see so many Diebenkorn paintings in person that I would have otherwise had to have traveled quite a bit for. So that show was really important for me to see, and it was amazing. I saw so many good Diebenkorn paintings, and man, the surfaces of a Diebenkorn painting are amazing. You can just tell he was coming out of this abstract expressionist treatment of surface, and then taking that and applying it to an observational painting, it just made the most sumptuous surfaces. They're bowl of painterly moves and textures that you would only really expect to see in an abex painting, but there you're seeing it in a painting that's made from direct observation. And so it just had this really unique touch. So many of the pieces had these really unique qualities of surface and paint handling. 
and it was great to see them. But this little composition has got me thinking about that. So let's talk about this painting. I'm looking out this window, and the top half of the window doesn't have a screen on it, but the bottom half of the window has a screen on it, so it's making the window a bit darker on the bottom. Everything you see through it is sort of going through a filter. I wasn't originally planning to paint this today, but I ended up seeing it and going back downstairs and looking at some other windows and doors and then going back up here and then just being like, nope, that's going to be it. And I was attracted to it for some reason. I think it was the, the subtle hint of narrative. I think it was something about the bottles on the windowsill, the different soap bottles, shampoo bottles that hint at this being in a bathroom or some kind of room like a bathroom or like a kitchen where you have bottles hanging around that get used often. So I was attracted to that and I was also really wanting to see what would happen if I throw really bright light onto the surface of this painting and see what does that do and how will that affect the way I'm mixing color. So I ended up having to spend quite a bit of time getting the colors mixed and trying a few things over and over because the light outside changed and then it changed again and then I was like oh which color should I go for should I go for the bright sun when the direct sunlight is hitting the wall opposite or should I go for more of the overcast sun opposite of me so I, I went back and forth like twice and then I finally committed to the overcast sun because it stayed within the gamut of paint that I could mix the light wasn't exaggerated too much and it kept the color palette tighter. It was more about value and light and less about color temperature. And so that attracted me. I wanted to keep this last painting simple. And I also really wanted to challenge myself and see how simple of a composition I could create with this doorway prompt and see if I would be satisfied with the outcome. So you'll notice this painting is just getting really stripped down. The interior is very dark and very limited. So even still, the information that I do include in the interior kind of gets canceled out by it just being so dark. So any of the drawing that I do on the interior, the little hints at door frames or light bleeding in and catching a little corner here or there or a little bit of trim, it kind of gets lost a little bit because it's trapped within this whole zone of darkness. It's like I'm on the inside of a cave looking out. And so those changes of tone and those changes of light on the inside of the room are just so subtle and so tight. But I was really careful to mix those colors. I didn't want to just go for like a generic dark color. I really wanted to get that color keyed in properly and to get the temperature and hue and saturation of that color dialed in before I committed to laying it down on the painting. And I'm glad I did because that one color, that shadow color of the interior consumes most of the painting. It consumes like 75%, maybe even 80% of the painting is that dark color. So for me, it was really important that I took my time with that and got it dialed in. So also another thing with this painting that is a fun challenge for me, and it's a, it's a kind of challenge that I love in painting, is painting a bunch of straight lines and trying to paint them freehand. This is something that is always like a challenge for me, but it's a fun challenge. It's like, how steady can I keep my hand? Honestly, as a painter, I have a shaky hand. And it's something I talk about with students constantly. If you would have seen how I held a brush 10 years ago. I would have never had done any of this sort of freehand work that I do in this painting where you see that I'm holding the brush further back and I'm letting my brush grip the surface and drag a line out freehand without using a hand brace or anything to stabilize my grip as I'm pulling a line. So how did I overcome this sort of shaky hand issue? Let me just tell you what the shaky hand issue actually is. When I would hold my brush up and start trying to freehand a mark and my arm is just dangling out in the air and I'm trying to carefully just dab a mark into a spot, 
As soon as I would start getting close to the painting, my hand just starts shaking like crazy. Even before I would touch my brush to the painting, my hand would just start shaking. And I was always just like, how do you get over this? I can't even paint. My hand is so shaky. And I started to figure out the reason why my hand would shake so much was because I was gripping my brush so hard and trying to force my brush into submission to stay steady and to not do anything I didn't want it to do. And that was actually what the problem was. Well, this might sound like just a stupid fix for it. But to overcome this, I started to just imagine that my entire body was underwater. I was just sort of bobbing there and relaxed. What happens when you're underwater is that you're able to let all of your muscles and your arms and legs just relax. If you move your hand or you move your arm underwater, you can do it with so much grace and a kind of fluidity that feels impossible to do out of the water. But if you are just standing in real life and then you close your eyes and imagine that you're just drifting underwater and you feel the weight of the water all around your body, it allows you to relax your limbs and to not grip everything so tightly. It seems counterintuitive to relax more and to give in more if you want more control with the brush, but that's what I ended up having to do is to actually surrender the control that I thought I needed with my hand and just let my whole arm relax and make these marks as if I was just underwater. It's funny that all of a sudden I had so much more control. I could pull a straight line with my brush with a kind of grace that I never would have thought was possible with someone like me who had that issue of having a shaky hand. Some people just don't even have this problem at all. They're really comfortable with just relaxing. Their shoulders are never tense when they're painting. Their shoulders are always relaxed. But I'm somebody who holds all of their stress in their shoulders. Like my shoulders and my neck, when I'm stressed, are always just so tight. So it makes sense that as I'm painting and I'm getting stressed about trying to make accurate marks or clean lines, that I'm going to tense up and get sore. The other thing too is when you paint like that or if you only hold your brush with a super tight grip, it's just going to destroy the tendons in your wrist and just make you miserable because physically you're abusing your arm, you're abusing your wrist because you're trying to hold on to this control in your brush so much. And it feels great to just let go and just paint with fluidity and just hold the brush gently. So yeah, back to this painting though. This painting is full of straight lines and full of opportunities to pull straight lines and to keep chiseling those lines in, chiseling them back out until I kind of found the line that I wanted. And I really enjoy this kind of painting. All of the work that I've done in the last few years has involved a ton of straight lines and I never tape out a line. And to be honest, I don't really enjoy seeing a lot of abstract paintings that have taped lines. I would much rather somebody paint the line by hand and see the hand of the artist handling the paint and the brush naturally. I mean, there's painters who do fantastic work with tape, and I'm not going to discount their work. It's amazing, and I love it. But personally, I definitely favor straight edges that are painted freehand. This was a fun experiment for me. The painting ended up being really dark, and I like that. And even the light outside wasn't that washed out looking because I had so much light on my painting that I was able to get some midtones in the outside and it felt natural still. So this was a fun experiment for me and I thought it was a nice risky way to end the week trying out something a bit differently than I had done for the first four paintings of this week. So this has been an awesome week. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching me paint. And again, if you have any questions, send me an email. I would love to answer your questions and interact in any kind of way. I'm really enjoying these daily paintings. So I hope you have a great weekend. I will see you all on Monday. Take it easy, everyone. Bye.